Welcome to WWP Clips. This is the official Clips channel for We Want Picks. We will be uploading our individual fight breakdown videos here. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And as always, go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. Sign up with any one of our five betting partners. Make a deposit and we send you 50 bucks as a thank you. Next up, at UFC Vegas 58, we have Kennedy and Chukwu taking on Carl Roberson. Kennedy and Chukwu is 9-3 and three overall, 3-2 three and two in his last five, and he is riding a two-fight skid there, and uh, one of those losses were to Nick Negamoreno, and that's a fight that he should have won. Carl Roberson is 9-5 and five overall, 2-3 and three in his last five, riding a three-fight losing skid and it's an interesting fight because both of these guys are really well skilled and they're likely fighting for their ufc careers the loser of this fight will probably be cut and historically anytime you've heard me break down kennedy and chuckle in the past i would say he's the comeback kid because he had several fights where he was getting smoked and then that one big punch late in the fight got him that win and he was able to turn those ties and he has not been able to do that in his last couple of fights. He's very long. He's got a ton of power. He's got solid takedown defense at 80%. And he's never out of a fight. He can be gun shy at times. And that's how he ends up falling behind. That's why he needed to rely on that big punch late in fights. Is because he's not throwing anything. And you know he's just starting to lose the minutes. And he's on that two fight losing skid. But he did look really good in his last fight against Nick Negamorenu. He had a great jab. He used his reach really well. But unfortunately, he did have a point deduction because of an eye poke. Kyle Roberson is also on a losing skid. But he also looked pretty decent in his last fight until he didn't, right? He was knocked out by Khalil Roundtree in the second round. But he won that first round. And he looked solid. He's a well-rounded guy with solid striking, a few sneaky submissions in his back pocket. The problem for him are his matchups. He has five losses in the UFC, which seems like a lot, but that was to Brendan Allen, Marvin Vittori, Glover Teixeira. These are just really tough fights against really tough guys, and he's just had a, some bad luck in that mix, I guess. But overall, he's a solid fighter, and he's pretty well-rounded. Kennedy is absolutely the more powerful striker in this matchup, but he can be gun shy. He's taking his time to throw those punches, and that could give Carl the opportunities he needs to maybe work in a takedown. He does average less than one takedown per fight, but he game plans really well, and his takedowns, in the fights that he does have takedowns, it's against strikers. He made those adjustments, did what he was supposed to do, like against Kopilov, like Darren Stewart, like Ryan Spann. He does have a knockout loss to Khalil, and that does worry me, but I do think he gets it done here. I think he's the better all-around fighter, and while I think Kennedy will be more dangerous, and he will be dangerous the entire 15 minutes, I think Roberson just gets it done with cleaner technique. I do think he'll game plan really well. He will probably get a takedown or two in this fight. So I'm liking Carl Roberson in the underdog slot. What do you think, Jakey boy? Uh, you thought he looked good in his last fight. Two judges disagree with you. They had Khalil winning the first round um, in that fight. I, I didn't think he looked bad, but he didn't look great. He did mention before that fight, I think it was a little short notice. I think he went to, was it James Krause? I think he switched camps or something and ended up with James Krause right before that fight. So it wasn't like a full training camp. And he said he really liked that camp. And he came out and, and looked, I guess, a little bit better, but, you know, ended up happening what happened. So maybe a full camp there, if he stayed there, will help him out. Here's how I see this fight going is whoever loses this fight is probably going to look really, really bad because both these guys in losses seem to look like they just don't want to be there, have no idea what they're doing type of situation. And when you get two guys like that, one of these guys is going to look awful. And probably, as you mentioned, fighting for the UFC lives, probably going to get cut after this. Um, this almost seems like one of those Carl Robinson fights where he just randomly shows up and, and, and wins and maybe looks, looks great doing it. But you know, as far as like, what have you done for me lately? I know they're both coming off, you know, losing streaks and stuff. But Kennedy in that last fight, you mentioned it. He looked like he was a little bit more into it. He came out. He was definitely pushing forward to start. And, you know, the, the corner eventually started yelling at him, like, continue to push forward. Keep pushing forward because he started getting off his back foot. But when he pushes forward with that length and with that jab snapping out there, he is a really good fighter, especially a kickboxer in general. And we actually saw that against uh, in that Uber fight. Now, Uber kind of gassed himself out. But when he starts turning on the pace and the volume. He's a really, really good striker with that volume punching. 
And Carl Robertson is one of those guys that you can kind of push around. He will let you push him to his back foot and stay against the cage. And that's the exact fight that Kennedy wants to fight. He wants to push you forward. And if he's able to do that, if you let him do that, and he's able to start getting off volume, that's when you're going to be in trouble because he can lay on volume almost better than anyone in that light heavyweight division. Um, so, you know, Mr. I poke Kennedy, he does that a lot. That's why he lost the points. It's not a great pick. I don't love the pick. If Carl Robeson comes through and, and looks fantastic and stays aggressive and knocks him out, I'm not going to be surprised. This is not a huge confident pick. I'm picking Kennedy, but I'm not like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, he's going to win. I'm not going to put any money on him. I'm staying away from this with my money completely, but my pick is Kennedy for this fight. There, there's a couple of guys on this card that are low volume, and there's nothing more frustrating than a talented low volume guy. Tracing Gore is one of them. We'll break him down a little bit. Yeah, I was. Gonna, I was it, I'm glad you said that because I was thinking right when you said that, I was like, oh, I, I know who you're talking about. No. It's just, it's just it's infuriating because you can see you're better. You can. What are you doing? Let your hands go. You're having success. Kennedy's one of those guys, and I'm 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 starting to hate that stuff more and more. You bet on him, and you just don't feel like you're getting your money's worth. Yeah, yeah it's, it literally like his last fight is money. Kennedy's like, go for it, go for it, go for it. Like, what yeah. are you doing? And somebody mentioned, isn't Carl a kickboxer? He was a glory kickboxer. I think his record yeah, is a professional kickboxer. Yeah, I think his record is 0 and 3 or 0 and 2. I know he lost to Dustin Jacoby at one point, but he, I think he literally is like 0 and 3 as a kickboxer. So, yes and no. Yeah, but he doesn't, uh, you know, I, I, I listen, it's a, it's a close fight. The odds reflect that. Everything about this is essentially a pick him. And I think I think it's exactly what we said. People were like, yeah, Kennedy's dangerous, but I can't necessarily trust him to let his hands go. Carter Roberson's definitely more well-rounded, but we just saw him be a little chinny, so who knows. But Jacob and I are split on this again. We've broken down three fights so far, and you and I only agree on one. Oh, wow. Just two, I think, but go go home, Queen. What? We've only broken down two fights. This is the second fight. This is the second fight? Oh, my God. Yeah. We're, Jesus, we're disag- wow. I told you, I was drinking all weekend. All weekend. Apparently, I have it's done. <sighs> I should tie one on. <laughs> Unfog Do we want to start drug head. testing? <laughs> okay, I'll pass a drug test, no problem. Um, eighty-two hundred dollars, eight thousand dollars in DraftKings. I think Kennedy and Chukwu is worth the eighty-two hundred more than Roberson the eight thousand. Because if Kennedy wins, it will be by knockout, and he will pay for himself. If Roberson wins. I think it's kind of just, he's just the more technical guy. I don't think there's a stoppage. It's a, it's actually a decent price point, $8,000. But I, you know, unless I'm positive he's going to get those takedowns in the control time, I don't know if he's worth the eight grand. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think between the two of them, the eighty two hundred dollars is the better value, but they're not gonna I mean, there's no way I'm putting either one of these guys in my lineup. Yeah, no it's thanks. it's too it's too close of a call. It's not like it was, you know, listen, with the Sean Strickland and Alex Pajeda fight where everybody was like Everybody was positive. They knew what side they were going to be on. And they were positive that person was going to win by knockout. And in all likelihood, one of them was going to win by stoppage. So you pick your side. Here, it's, I don't think there's a stoppage. So it's probably kind of a sloppy decision. So uh, DraftKings not going to touch right. it. The odds, pick your side. I think it's more and more in Monkey Knife Fight. Although Kennedy is a little gun shy. That gets frustrating. But I do think it's... Um, does not go the distance is minus 155. The over under is at one and a half. Over one, one and a half is minus 185. Yeah. So there, I don't even know. Why do you make the line one and a half if, if the over is going to be so, you know what I mean? Just yeah, make it two and, and a half. A, there was a few of those. I was, yeah, I was looking at a few of those and I was like, oh, one and a half. And I saw stuff like that. I'm like, you motherfuckers. Just make it two and a half and, and the odds will be a pick them instead. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, and unless I got to look at it because maybe it opened with appropriate odds and then people just pounded it. But, Anyway, um, we th- I think more and more in the monkey knife fight. I think they will go at it. I think it'll be a little sloppy. It'll be a little bit of a longer fight, but I do think they'll get their strikes off. If you want to check that out, we on picks.com slash MKF. And if you want 50 bucks, $50 for free, it's literally all you need to do. We on picks.com slash bets. Sign up with any one of our five betting partners. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you after you make a deposit. We on picks.com slash bets.